From a distance, northern Uganda looks like a massive green quilt, stitched together with rivers and trees. But up close, this seemingly unblemished land is covered with wounds and scars, the impact of over 20 years of war and instability. And you don't have to dig too deep to find evidence of the horror. This is where the bones of uh, those who were massacred on the 22nd October 2002. Uh, after the massacre, they picked the bodies and uh, they were dumped here. And up to now, the bones are still lying there. Local Acholi culture is one reason they haven't been buried. They believe that if you bury the person like that, then death that comes in that form will reoccur. The fears aren't entirely ungrounded. Joseph Kony, leader of the rebel group the Lord's Resistance Army, has inflicted over 20 years of brutality and hostility in this region, with seemingly no real purpose or enemy but the government. Despite its name, the LRA has no connection with the divine. Those who paid the price are Kony's own people, ransacking villages, abducting boys and girls, killing men and women. The LRA has literally changed the landscape of northern Uganda. To understand the LRA conflict, you really have to understand the bush that blankets northern Uganda. This is where soldiers would hide out and it was too dangerous for civilians to walk the roads, which is why they set up transit camps. The building in IDP camps are, were really temporary and was in a very small place that was just put there for emergency on a temporary basis. Many people hope to have returned home by now. Instead, internal displacement camps have become makeshift communities. And though a relative peace has come and the LRA have retreated into neighboring Congo, many are still stuck here. Going home is a challenge. Bad roads are the least of the problems. This is typical during rain season. You can stop like get stuck like three or four times before you reach your destination. And Alice Achan is familiar with the obstacles. Her family too was affected by the war. So this house has significance to you? Yeah, this is where my mother, okay, when, when, when war displaced us from the camp, this is where my mother uh, lived with my sister. Family is sister. very important in Ugandan society, more than any home or possession. The breakdown of social structures is one of many lasting legacies of the conflict. Uh, this is a, it's As a, it's a teenager, Alice was separated from her closest kin. And like many of her people, there's no longer any home to go to. This is all that remains of her village. Still, it's a place of happy memories. The grave for my brother, my mother, I mean my father was buried there. Her father was the village chief, his grave obscured now by trees and bush. We had everything, we had cows, we had milk, there's plenty of food. It was happy until I was about 13 or, 14, uh, 13 or 12 years old that all of a sudden this thing disappeared from home. And that was the time that war broke. And it was never the same again. I never really the memories, like good and bad, still linger for a Chan, and so do the fears. I feel so scared sometimes, especially at night, because like uh, anything can happen. My spirit is really so scared when I come at night because uh, going out is bushy. You could just imagine the LRA would come back again. Still, a Chan considers herself blessed. While others were forced to stay in camps, she managed to get away to Kampala and go to university. She says she would still be there if God hadn't intervened. It was in 2002 when there was too much insecurity that the Lord asked me to come back to Padel. And uh, it was something that I couldn't even believe and I couldn't imagine because the rebels are so many. And we went praying, we went praying. I had the same thing, go back to Paris. She did. With no resources and security but her own savings and faith, Christian Counseling Fellowship was born. Her goal was to reach the child mothers, girls abducted, raped and impregnated by LRA insurgents. Rescued by the Ugandan army, many girls had nowhere to go. We started with about 40 girls who were completely devastated. 
they were young and they didn't know what to do. Like so many things in Africa, her work started under a big tree. Armed with only a degree in social work and a few Bibles, a chance started counseling the girls. Our favorite verse used to be Jeremiah 20, 29 verses 11 to 14. The girls just confirmed that their survival and their abduction was for a purpose because God brought them out and they're helping many people. And indeed they have helped so many children through, so many children passed through their hand. There was no international NGOs between 2003 to 2005. That's because Padere was the epicenter of the war and dangerous. But in 2006, Crossroads Missions came through and discovered Christian Counseling Fellowship. Missions Director David Shelley says Achan was exactly the kind of person they choose to partner with. They're very well connected with community because they're involved in the church life on the ground in northern Uganda. So they automatically have an in with the people and they know the needs. Today's CCF has grown far beyond crisis counseling. It's reaching out to the whole community through building homes, agricultural training, education, and most of all, care. A chance says it's her life's calling. If it was not because of God's bread, I would be like them. There was nothing special about me. I was always in the village where the rebels could abduct me, but God kept me, I think, for a purpose.